Now, our planet has gone through five mass extinctions. One of them was so bad, it wiped out over 95% of life forms on our planet. Scientists think they might have found the culprit – volcanoes. Scientists took some ancient rocks from a dozen global locations and found elevated levels of mercury, which was released by volcanoes millions of years ago. This points to volcanic eruptions as the probable cause of the Permian-Triassic extinction event. The mercury didn't just come from rocks, it was from the atmosphere. This means that when the volcanoes erupted, they released this poisonous gas into the air. They produced about 720,000 cubic miles of ash, vastly more than the infamous eruption of Mount St. Helens. The gas left a trace that marks one of history's most significant catastrophes, setting the stage for the age of dinosaurs. These eruptions most likely released mercury by igniting large coal deposits. Shallower waters showed mercury spikes right at the extinction's main horizon, while deeper sections recorded spikes tens of thousands of years earlier. This could mean that the effects of the volcanic activity and the extinction it triggered varied across different ocean depths. That means that the extinction was prolonged and complex. It not only caused significant climate warming at the time, but also led to some other toxic events, like acid rain which made the situation even worse for plants and animals. Although few things have made it from the Permian period to the present day, we can get an idea of what the world was like back then from the fossils found in eastern Kansas. Now, 252 million years ago, the Earth was thriving. The Earth's continents were coming together to form the supercontinent Pangaea. The land was mostly dry, and the Earth looked like a harsh, arid desert, vast stretches of land with minimal water sources. The climate varied from scorching summers to frigid winters. There were some plants here and there, mostly conifers, large ferns, and primitive mosses in places with more water. The Earth was dominated by dinosaur-like creatures like palacosaurs or theropsids, often called mammal-like reptiles. There was also the fierce Demetrodon with its awesome snail-like spine. These three were the top predators of their time. Smaller reptiles and amphibians also populated the landscape alongside burgeoning insects like beetles and dragonflies, which thrived during that dry time. But all the interesting stuff mostly happened in shallow tropical seas. Marine environments were bustling with life – rich coral reefs, shellfish called brachiopods, animals known as bryozoans, and large single-cell fusilinids, which kind of look like they're covered in moss. Small funny ammonoids were quite popular as well, often hanging out in the oceans alongside brachiopods, bony fish, and sharks. Creepy trilobites, ancient marine creatures that first appeared 500 million years ago in the Cambrian period, but then persisted up to the Permian period. Trilobites were very diverse – active predators to scavengers or plankton eaters. However, almost all these beautiful creatures were about to disappear during the Permian-Triassic extinction. Now this extinction was truly ruthless. More than two-thirds of amphibian and reptile species disappeared, and nearly one-third of all insect species were wiped out. Usually the insects are resilient survivors, which shows how catastrophic this event was. Among these extinct animals was the terrifying Meganeuropsis, a giant dragonfly with a wingspan of nearly two and a half feet, once found in central Kansas near Elmo. This place is famous for its rich collection of Permian insect fossils, including ancient crickets and cockroaches. For a while, it was a mystery what exactly happened. Theories ranged from a massive asteroid strike and natural pollutants choking the oceans of oxygen, to dust clouds, to cosmic volcanic eruptions blocking the sun and cooling the planet. There was evidence for each of these scenarios, but the recent discovery points to the volcanoes theory after all. There's also a possibility that the reason wasn't just the volcanoes. NASA-funded researchers have recently uncovered what might be the fingerprints of this ancient perpetrator, or at least one of its accomplices. By investigating rocks around the globe, they've found evidence pointing to a massive asteroid strike as a possible culprit. They found unusual molecules, shaped like soccer balls, known as fullerenes. These molecules contain rare gases that usually come from space. This suggests that an enormous space rock, perhaps as large as Mount Everest, crashed into the Earth, contributing to extinction. There seems like there might have been a series of catastrophic events. 
The volcanoes were spewing vast quantities of lava and gas that altered the climate, Pangaea was forming and disrupting weather and ocean patterns, and an asteroid decided to join in as the cherry on top. Lucky for us, nature is super persistent and always finds its way to be reborn. This just proves how resilient the Earth is. Now, what's interesting is this wasn't the only time that happened. The late Devonian extinction, which happened around 360 million years ago, is also tied to volcanic activity. Volcanic eruptions and the proliferation of land plants could have altered the nutrients flowing into the oceans. The Triassic-Jurassic extinction, which happened around 200 million years ago, a bit before the dinosaurs, might have also been a result of a volcanoes plus asteroid impact combo. And finally, about 66 million years ago, the last dramatic shift happened on Earth. Our planet went from the age of dinosaurs to the age of mammals. This momentous change is known as the KPG extinction. Just like the Permian extinction, it was a sudden event that ushered in new forms of life. Then, once again, there are two major theories about what happened. The most popular theory tells us that the dinosaurs disappeared because of a massive asteroid. The Chicxulub meteorite smashed into present-day southern Mexico, creating the Chicxulub crater. The meteor was about 6 miles wide and hurtling towards Earth at incredible speeds. The impact was so powerful that it vaporized everything nearby instantly and released more energy than any other event in a billion years. The aftermath was catastrophic. Earthquakes shook the continents, and the ground itself heaved like a stormy sea. As the dust thrown up by the asteroid settled, it fell back to Earth like rain, heating up the atmosphere so much that forests worldwide burst into flames. Not far behind was a gigantic tsunami, stirred up by the ocean floor's upheaval, which swamped coastlines near the Gulf of Mexico. Not all dinosaurs perished immediately. In places like New Zealand, some dinosaur populations survived initially. However, a dark, ash-filled sky eventually covered the globe, blocking out the sun and plunging the world into cold and darkness. The long-term effect of the asteroid is what really sealed the fate for dinosaurs. Without sunlight, the food chain collapsed rapidly. Herbivores slowly disappeared, followed by the carnivores that depended on them, and the ash settling back to the Earth exacerbated the environmental upheaval, with fluctuating temperatures making survival tough. But there's another theory that says that, like with the Permian extinction, the asteroid was just the cherry on top. The dinosaur extinction was inevitable because of the volcanoes. Around a million years before the dinosaurs' demise, massive volcanic activity began under where India is today. This event created the Deccan Traps, a vast plateau formed from layers of lava that covered an area as large as France. For hundreds of thousands of years, these volcanoes spewed sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This turned the skies dark and the rain acidic, poisoning food sources and turning oceans into toxic baths. These changes were gradual but relentless stressing ecosystems, breaking food chains, and leading to a slow but steady decline in many species, including the dinosaurs. Although it's not certain which theory is true, scientists now think that both were equally to blame. Maybe one day we'll have a clear picture of how the reign of the dinosaurs came to such an abrupt end. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.